Uh, this is a big yeah, night uh, for Turner Classic Movies also. Obviously, we share uh, with the Conservancy a, uh, a, a, a passion for, for preserving and promoting uh, classic movies for, for generations uh, to come. Uh, I am I of that relevant generation. It was not too long ago that, that my idea of a classic movie was, was Die Hard 2. <laughs> Bruce Willis, Cary Grant, practically the same guy, I think, when you really start to think about it. Uh, but, but our guest of honor tonight actually played a significant role in my uh, coming of age as a, as a true fan of, uh, of great classic American movies. I was, I don't know, 13, maybe 14 years old. Uh, I turn on the TV and The Defiant Ones is on. And that movie made an enormous impact on me. Such a huge impact that the first thing, next day at school, I, I handcuffed myself to a black guy. I just, <laughs> I, I thought it was so powerful. Anyway, enough, uh, enough about that. If you're a young man, or I suspect an old man, or a woman, perhaps, uh, our guest tonight is really, uh, has led a life that most of us could only dream about. Uh, and, and he is, of course, enormously uh, talented, and he is the epitome of cool, even in a dress and heels. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, Tony Curtis. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I live here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. That's a nice reception. I'm so happy to be here with all of you tonight. You're going to see what I think is an excellent film. Uh, we worked hard. On, thank you. We worked uh, really hard on it. It, was a, it wasn't the easiest show, but these kind of movies aren't. They're all you have to work on. And I thought what I would do, instead of giving you a rundown of me, I thought I'd tell you some stories from the picture, stories that happened. Maybe you'll enjoy them. We were going to be dressed up as women, Jack and I, and uh, the uh, production company sent us down to Western Costumes, which is just down the street from here, to get some dresses. They were horrible. They gave me a Loretta Young dress with the hips way up here. They tried on a Debbie Reynolds, and it was just, th this clothes just didn't look good. And I said to Jack, we can't go on stage in the movie dressed like this because we're supposed to be hiding out from the gangsters dressed as women. We looked like, uh, never mind what we looked like, but we didn't look like women. <laughs> so I went to Billy Wilder. I said, Billy, uh, um, what was the name of this? Uh, what was his name? The uh, wardrobe costume guy? Who? Ori Kelly, you little darling, now you know why you're here. <laughs> Ori Kelly, the most wonderful man in, in that profession. A charming, charming person. I liked him very much. We were really good friends. And he was doing Marilyn's clothes. So they decided it'd be okay for him to do our clothes. Well, Jack and I were so happy. You know, one of the great couturiers of our time was going to make our clothes. Even when I didn't remember his name. <laughs> anyway, this one day he was going to come by the studio at Goldwyn and where Jack, I, and Marilyn had three dressing rooms alongside of each other in this building. So Ori Kelly came by and he had in his breast pocket a wrapped up piece of tape. You know the kind that we all knew as kids, made of linoleum, one yard, and... Uh, he whipped it out of his pocket. He first went to Jack. And Jack came out in boxer shorts. And he measured Jack, 13, 41, 57, 37 and a half, 19, 12, 14. When he finished with Jack, he came out to see me. And I was wearing, in those days, what were Calvin Klein, which were jockey shorts. And uh, so I came out and he took my measurement, 15, 37, 15, 19, 24, 36. 
When he finished with me, we went to Maryland. Now, the story from now on was told to me by Ori Kelly, okay? He went in to see Marilyn. Marilyn came out with a pair of panties and a silk uh, shirt, a silk blouse. And he started to take a measurements. 13, 41, 57, 7, 9 and a half. He got to a bottom and he fitted around and looked up at her and he said, you know, Tony Curtis has a better looking ass than you. <laughs> She opened up her blouse and said, he doesn't have tits like these. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> While making the movie, uh, the camera was here, and I was on this side of the camera, and Billy Wilding on the other. About five feet away was Marilyn with a big head close-up. And that was the line in the movie where she points up and says, what, it, what is it to the sailfish? And I say, it's a, it's a member of the herring family. She says, isn't that amazing that they get so big? And I said, they shrink when they're marinated. Those were the jokes, <laughs> right? We did it in a semi-master shot. It was difficult for Mar Marilyn to memorize lines. I don't know why, but never mind. Anyway, so uh, uh, we got through that, and he decided to do it in a two-shot and then an over-shoulder of me onto Marilyn. We were all so nervous about Marilyn, you know, because she was having trouble with herself. And uh, I had given her a glass of champagne, and she stood in front of the fish, looking at me in the camera here, and Billy Wilder there, and uh, she's got her champagne in her hand. I'm going to be switching parts, so uh, be prepared. <laughs> and uh, she said, uh, what is it? And I said, it's a member of the... Herring family. She said, that's amazing. Cut. Uh, no, it's, that's amazing. How did they get those big fish? Yes, got it. Then we did it again. She said, what is that? Billy said, cut. You have to keep the glass in your left hand so we can match it with the rest of the scene. Oh, got it. She put it in the left hand and said, uh, where are we? What scene are we doing? <laughs> Billy said, we're doing the scene in the yacht where you're talking to them about the fish above your head. She said, oh, of course I'm doing that. She said, that. She said uh, what is that herring? He said, cut, that's not the line. <laughs> the line is, what is it? Tony will say, it's a member of the herring family. Well, we went through about 12 or 15 takes, and Marilyn could not get it right. She kept switching the glass back and forth, or, or a, a line came out that wasn't quite what it was. So while she's standing there with the glass, she, went, she whispered like... Uh, uh, Charlie McCarthy used to with the dummy, uh, Bergen, Edgar Bergen. He, she said, Tony. I said, yes, Marilyn. She said, what is it? I said, what is what? She said, what's the line? <laughs> I said, that's it. <laughs> she said, what is it? I said, that, what is it? She said, I'm asking you. <laughs> Always whispering. It was like that uh, Abbott and Costello, who's on first routine. I swear this happened. We stood there, we did it about 15, 20 times. Billy Wallace said, cut, let's go to lunch, and we'll pick it up after lunch. <laughs> that was our darling Marilyn. I took, uh, I took uh, Jack Lemon into the ladies' room at the Warner Brothers. I said, let's see if this makeup works. He says, I'm not going in there. I said, yes, you are. And I took him by the hand, and we went in, and we went right up to the mirror, and I started adjusting my lipstick and my eyelashes, and... Uh, the girls were coming in and out of the stalls behind us, and we stood there for a minute. Nobody noticed us or anything. I said, come on, let's get out of here. And we walked out. He said, Tony, I can't believe it. I said, Jack, I told you it would work. We look perfect. Just then a girl comes walking by me, and she says, hi, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> we got a, some, a female impersonator. Billy Wilder thought he'd get in. He got a very famous Frenchman who did that kind of work. And... Uh, so he was going to teach us how we should behave like women. For one thing, he said, you've got to tighten your buttocks and then make sure one foot is good before the other. And then he said, don't keep your hands like this because you can see the muscle. If you turn the hand down, the muscle disappears, right? So 
There we were. I pursed my lips all through it. Thanks. I thought I looked a little manly. I was just, so I would every time I stopped talking, I would purse my lips. Well, you'll see that tonight. We have one of our darling girls who was one of the uh, girls in the chorus. Stand up, Marilyn. Marilyn. You'll see her in there. Did you play the trombone? She played the clarinet. Watch for her. Uh, I had such a good time on that movie. We had a lot of fun. There were so many things going on constantly. Anyway, I've been in movies 52 years now. Started in 48 when I was 23. I'm going to have a birthday tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to go ahead. I was going to say just ladies and gentlemen, you got a surprise. Yeah. Oh, there are a number of other stories of a, that I would go into, but uh, I, I think I've given you a little flavor of what the film is like. You guys enjoy it. For me, it's uh, I've made 160 movies, and uh, the, this one, I have a number of them that I like. I'm one of those lucky actors that made... Uh... Hi, Ben. Hey, how are you, man? Good. Don't let me interrupt you. Please. I wanted... You're not. I, 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 uh, I made 160 movies about, uh, of which I can say maybe there are 15 or 20 of them that are really, I feel, excellent films, and Some Like It Hot is one of them. And that means a lot to me, you know? I dedicated my life to this profession. I was nominated once for The Defiant Ones with Sidney Poitier. But I... Uh, right, thanks. I never really appreciated, you know, they split the vote. They gave Sidney and me because we were chained together. A black man and a Jewish man. He was the Jewish man. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm so, so happy I'm alive, girls. And you girls have had a lot to do with it. I love women and I, I've had a good life and a very pleasant wife. I have a beautiful wife over there and my pal... Ben. Ben, take over. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Curtis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful ovation. Thank you very much. Oh, shall I say uh, Tony, I have a little surprise for you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Curtis may be a bit too modest to mention it, but tomorrow is his birthday. Yes. And we have a special treat for you, Mr. Curtis. A wonderful birthday cake. If you could bring this. A couple this, of this, girls. It would be over there. Yes. <laughs> oh. Is that neat? And put Thank that cake you. right on the table here. Put it right up here. Right up here. <laughs> right up here. Hold yeah, on. put it up here. Shall we? Thanks, guys. Thanks, hey, pal. Put, put the, uh, the cake right. on the table. Yeah. And now is yet even more of a special treat take for you. The, take the end of the cake. To sing happy birthday, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't we all join in and sing Tony Curtis' happy birthday. And to accompany him, here's Mr. Ian Whitcomb on his enchanted accordion. Is this one of those candles that don't go out? That is a real candle that you oh, can actually blow out. Give it to me, buddy. All together, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks. You may blow out the candle and make a wish. I blow out this candle with a special feeling for all of you in the theater tonight. For a couple of minutes tonight, we all were together. So I feel of we're, we're more than family. You know, what's so appealing to me is that all of you know me from the movies, and I only know you by your applause and your friendship. I thank you. We'll cut it up on off stage. Yeah. Well, and maybe you'll give some pieces to us. We'll, we'll cut it up into 2,000 little teeny pieces yes, for right. you, ladies and gentlemen. You each get a few molecules of birthday cake. Shall we start the movie? 
Yes, we shall. Yes. Let's get this uh, table off here. Say, fellas, it's time to get the cake off the stage. I'll take one, then you take the sure. other. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Tony Curtis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to watch the opening credits from here. Okay, Alex, electrician, roll it. We're ready. We ready, to... ready when you are, Mr. DeMille. Thank you. First, I have to open the curtains. The what? They open the curtains first. It looks better that way. Yeah, I would think so. But we're ready down here. You know, before we can start the picture, we have to take the speakers off the stage so it doesn't obstruct the view from the audience. Yes, we must do that. So right, they they won't be able the... to hear us once we... Was there one? Yeah, there's one speaker. All right, fellas, you can take the speakers off. Oh, there we go. How will I just... 